Hello everybody, this is Welsh McLevsky again. I'm, I'm very happy to be back to be honest. You know, it's it's been about honestly, about nine months since my last commentary, so I'm very happy to return now. So what what we're going to do today is well today is October the twenty first and as many of you who who might be watching this for history might know. Today is a very historic date. It's the fourth time that Harold Kemping has been wrong. So, you know, what I thought I'd do this time is, in honour of this, I thought I'd, in honour of what Harold Kemping thinks is the last day for, f for humanity on Earth, I thought I'd do the final race of the 2011 season. So, so we're going to do Interlagos today, and, and in the car that finished last, in the championship last year. It's the village in Coe and Jerome D'Ambrosio to be honest and uh, you know he's, he's very slow but what do you expect is in a village in. Um, but what I was going to say is that uh, you know he, he's very much like custard. You know, D'Ambrosio dig away the day and it is custard so yes and we were starting in last two days after a power qualifying session. Now I've never raced on F1 2011 in this, you know, on this circuit before. So, you know, please bear with me if I'm a bit slow. But, you know, I, I hope I get a bit quicker as I go on, to be honest, you know, so yes. Okay, now, now we have to get into the top ten to score points for anyone who's new to Formula One. So, yes. As we hit Pester Maldonado there, another rookie. Is this this Jerome? Oh no, nearly, no, nearly spun nowhere. Held it together, okay. Okay, so they're now in the 14th, 14th place. Okay, so 13th now, well done, 14th. Not, not exactly sure what position is secure anymore. Um, very funny how the difficulty setting for the AI is an intermediate and yet this is actually wet weather condition, not intermediate. We seem to be constantly finding ourselves in 14 of place. Very good for a village in as we take the co in it. Right, so, right, so he's trying to come back across at me, I tap Mr. Petrov, again I think, no, I think Mr. Vitaly Petrov's a very slow driver to be honest, you know. I, I, I'm sorry to any Russian fans who are watching at the minute, but I, 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 I really do think that, you know, he's very slow. And, and look at that, when, that's the problem with the village in, we, Hang on. We're halfway down that straight and we're already hitting the, the limit where. No, to be fair, we're already we're only doing 184 miles an hour. I think in the dry you can. I think in the dry you can take that cover now at about. Well, no, you can you can go you can go down that straight at the best part of 200 miles an hour. Well, the better part of 200 miles now than the part that we were doing right then. Now, now I, I should just explain to people who are new, you know, what's going on here. Basically, what's going on is they're getting this little thing called the Kowes Boost on me. Now, the Kowes system will give you about six to seven seconds of extra horsepower a lap. I think it's about 80 extra horsepower a lap for six to seven seconds and but only if you only when you're using it so sorry about this you know this is the last one so you better get it right this fucking time I tell you so basically they're getting an unfair advantage on me because I'm in one of the slower teams or if you like one of the new teams who are not quite, you know, 
don't quite have the financial security as oh no as some of the other teams do so so you know we we've got to live without coways so we don't get the extra you know eighty horsepower per lift. Look at me, I'm being very cautious in these wet weather conditions. So yes, uh, now we're down to 17th place if you can see it, so I, I hope you would be able to, to be honest, you know. Uh, uh, oh, we've gone quickest. It's not very realistic, we're in a fucking virgin. And if you're, and if you're a holy person, I suppose you could see that as another reference to the rupture that didn't happen today, you know, Virgin Mary and the Virgin Kewe. Although, you know, that's another thing that doesn't make sense. How can you have a fucking child when you haven't even had sex? Although, to be fair, these days you get this thing you know, all you really need to do these days is get a woman's egg and then some get a skin cell from get some skin cells from from the same woman and then put them together and then you've got a baby there, you know. You don't even need a man anymore. And and they're talking about how females don't have as much rights as men. What are you talking about? Oh, oh yes, yeah, sure, Adrian Sudo's got the fastest lap now. Although, to be fair, I think he qualified second here in 2009 in his first India. Which, of course, was not the quickest cow air for the time. Still not the quickest car now, but it's getting there, to be honest. Um, to be honest, out of all the midfield teams, I think that Force India have the best chance out of all of them of becoming <laughs> of becoming the quick team in the future. I'm sorry about all of this, everybody, but you know, you, you, you're distracting me by me talking to you. No, oh, I'm off the circuit again. <laughs> Divester! Oh fucking hell. Legal overtake! I was on the sewer kit! I was on the fucking sewer kit and then... Wait, fuck you, you little shit! I need to fucking overtake my OS. To mean me exactly about 2009! You can't even overtake one off the fucking circuit! This is ridiculous! Well, just you let this be known, Codemasters, I'll be complaining to you. I'm so sick of all the errors there are in your games. Why haven't you gotten it right yet? This is the third... This is your third fucking chance in F1 game. And I still wouldn't give you more than a five out of ten. Now let's have a look, shall we? F1 2009... That was, that was the biggest mistake you could possibly make as a gaming company. So, you know, I, I give that game a 2 out of 10, because it's absolute shit. Oh, and I've got another penalty! What's going on? And how can you give someone a fucking... He should get a fucking... Yeah, well, this is ridiculous, isn't it, everybody? Uh, you know, you try and fucking do a good race and then you get penalties all the time. And I suppose all they have to do now is... I suppose all I... Uh, uh, I suppose I just save the fuel and then come in, to be honest.
Come on, Mr. Custard, let's get this over with, shall we? Mr. Lewis, see? Mm -hmm. I tell you, it is get a bit confusing at the start of a season when you get, you know, when when a driver swaps teams. Because, you know, it, it did take me a while to get used to the fact that, you know, Lewis was in a is in Hispania this team and, and it's a bit confusing when you play this game after playing F1 2010 because you forget that he's not playing for the same team right okay so we go round I turn the engine up just to make sure that we can get the best result possible even despite the crash into the wheel wheel right ok um, under the F1 2011 bridge not very realistic self advertisement in your own game uh, oh yes we was doing a review wasn't I so you're hitting the rev limiter again! I've got to, I've got up to him already, my own teammate. Mr. Glock. One of Glock weapon. A Glock gun, if you will, to be honest. Now, now if this was the dry, I'd get this thing called DRS. I'm sorry if I am explaining this to people who already know, but you know, this is for anybody who doesn't know already, you know. Now, what the DRS is, is it opens up the rear wing, and, you know, it, it gives you a good amount of speed advantage, you know, in the streets. But obviously, because this is the wet, you know, you can't use it. But the stupid thing is, you know, it's fine to use it in the wet when you're on the dry tyres even though it's still quite slippery like I could go in f right now for dry tyres and I could just use the DRS if I was one second behind somebody no, it's, it's quite stupid really Well, I, I didn't really do much setup work. This is literally my flip around here in this game, so yes. In the Virgin Kowe. And then 80 miles an hour. See, it's fine down that street, it's just down the back street. Down the pit street, I mean, when you're coming in. You know, to the, to the end of the lift, you know, you're hitting the rib limiter just as you cross the lane and you've got another hundred or maybe even more metres to go. I've done him into that corner, up to 22nd place now, to be honest. I tell you what would help my race out, it'd be a fucking safety car, to be honest. Hold it together, hold it together, you know, so yes, there we are. Well done, Mr. Custard. I better just... Let me just make sure we have enough fuel to get to the end. And not just to the end, but to push right until the very end. Oh. Anyway, SF1 2010, I think... You know, even though it is a good game, it's still got a lot of flowers. But in my honest opinion, I'd say it's got less flowers than F1 2009 and F1 2011. But also, you know, I, I don't think it's the best F1 game that Codemasters have produced, you know. Well, at the same time, if I was Bernie Eccleston, I'd take away the co the gaming contract with Codemasters as soon as I 
So graphics for F1 2009 because it's absolutely pure. As soon as I even played F1 2009, in fact, I would have said, "Right, this game is not even going to get produced." Because, because the game honestly looks like, you know, it it, it should have been released for the PS1, or you know, it, it should have been released for another console back in the 90s. The graphics are that bad. In fact, I think that, you know, F1 2000 on the PS1, I think that had better graphics than, you know, F1 2009, and this was nine years before where. Right, so Kurt Kayan, who isn't in F1 anymore, let's just remember that, and well, he is returning for this weekend, to be fair with he's not hitting the rev limiter, seemingly, on the street. So yes. So, so how is my car hitting the rev limiter, and his isn't? I think, I think my car was hitting the rev limiter in the beginning, because for so, for so long he was behind, you know, one of the slower drivers than me, you know. I've been to 20th place now, into the top 20. 10 positions down and where we want to be though, but you know, we're not going to get into the points today. Uh, I always cock up in that corner, why do I keep doing that? All those... All those fucking tyre marks you just saw, they're all from my fucking tyres. Oh hang on, we're getting into intermediate weather to be a nest. Well, well, well it stopped raining. <laughs> or at least it's bad anyway, you know. Yes, I, I think I think the conditions are getting a bit better. It's, I wouldn't go so far as to say put on the inters right now, because you know it's, it's still pretty wet. I, it, it's looking to me like give it a couple of laps, and it'd be time for the intermediate tears. Uh, and unless it starts raining again. I know in a couple of laps it'll be lap 13, but, you know, so are you really going to, is it really worth coming in for one lap for, on the intermediate tyres? I don't think it is, you know. If Jarno Trolley keeps his position, it's very intense, for 19th place. Rounds the final corner of this Sunday clockwise sewer kit. The corner that I will never forget, you know, I, I remember actually. Watching the F1 2008 race. I, I can even remember the date of that race, it was November the 2nd, 2008. You know, I, I can remember, you know, I can remember Jim Lewis Hamilton taking Timo Gluck from the final corner. Of course, back in those days, Mr. Gluck was driving for a team called Toyota. who are no longer in F1 anymore, but their cars are often used by Pirelli to test out the Teus. As I'm sure you know. But you, you know, you, you know, you, you're not at all going to know, are you? You know, Mr. Powell Diresta, first of the midfield drivers to be, you know, next on my list. Mr. Powell Derester, the Scottish driver. I'm, I've been very impressed by Mr. S by Mr. Powell Derester, to be honest. Yes, he's, he, he, I do think he did very well in the first. Yeah, well, I think he's done very well this season, and I think he'll do very well for the rest of it as well, to be honest. And I think, you know, give him the right cover, and I think he could you know, be doing well. Like, you know, some people are talking about, 
you know, maybe he's worthy of being a world champion, but I, I don't know. Maybe maybe he is, you know, and it's it's a bit difficult to say when he hasn't really had the cowair. And you know, well let's see in the future if he gets the cowair. Now I, I think that's the problem with F one, you know, some drivers you know, you don't really see them doing well very often because they're in a slow car. So they miss out on the quicker drives because the teams can't see the talent in this driver. So, you, you know, but uh, then again, what can you do, you know, you're in a slower team. You know, if, if you're finishing, you know, 18th in a low, in a, you know, Hispania, you know, that, that's just a normal day for that team, you know. It's just, oh, we'll take it in place because it's, you know, all well, we can normally hope for, really. Okay, so now I've got the fastest lap, 5.2 behind Mr. Duesta. I'm not going to do it, but, you know, let's see how close we can get to him. Uh, as he cut the cinemas as we go around it for the 14th and lowest time. Okay, that's better. For, oh, 4.4 where? Right. And still seeing. Yeah. And now 11 in front of Trolley are the best part of 11 seconds anyway. I can see Mr. Paul DeResta there. There he is. I just saw him on the screen. There he is. He's going around the next corner. Now. There he is. He's going on the corner again. I better come round here. He's going on the corner again. Yes, he's going on the corner again. And yes. Here we go then. With the final corner, we couldn't quite make it up to him as you could probably expect. It was a five second gap for Christ's sake. But you know, we, I, th I think I did very well after the two penalties. Oh dear, I, I, th I just ran out of fuel at the end, you see. That, that I'd explain that. Bit of a shame, I was looking forward to seeing how quick that lap was. No, you can't be too happy with that result, you know, 19th place in a bow edging, you know. Although it is the best of the newer teams, pretty much all virgin can help bow her. Um, you know, <coughs> <coughs> well, pardon me, I've got a bit of a cold, you see. Um, no, I, I think that, to be honest, you know, I, I did try my best, to be honest. Let's, what shall we say then? Uh, Oh, I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, let's see. Let's see, I lost about half a minute in the steps. So, 24.8. I think I, sh I think I could have finished 8th without those two penalties, to be honest, you know, so yes. So I am a thoroughly disappointed with that result, to tell you that. But yes, thank you for watching this on 22nd of October. And uh, if, it's 20, if it's the 22nd of October next year, then, well, well, I don't know what to say, to be honest. You know, it's the 22nd of October. What do you, what, what, what do you want from me here? But anyway, yes, thanks for watching this video. It's always a pleasure to do these commentaries and, you know, hopefully join me in again in the future when maybe we'll be doing a commentary with Mr. Jonathan Lichard. So goodbye.